In this video we will learn how to draw ion channels in Adobe Illustrator. So we're going to start with the lipid bilayer and I'm going to click on the rectangle, click on brown, and I'm just going to draw a very simple lipid bilayer. Now we're not going to spend a lot of time on the lipid bilayer because we really care about the ion channels and I recommend drawing it about the same size that you plan on using in your final illustration, rather than just drawing it really large and scaling it down or drawing it really small and scaling it up. Okay, so we're gonna start with a very simple ion channel. I'm gonna click on the rectangle. I'm gonna switch it to kind of the darker green. And I want the bound, then want the outline to be the really dark green. And if you don't see this uh, toolbar up top, go up to window, click on control. Okay, so we're going to draw just a very simple rectangle. And now we're going to draw the two sides of the rectangle. So this is kind of like the, the, the channel interior. So it's going to be a little darker. Now I'm going to copy it. And I copied it by clicking on this object, then holding the Alt key till I see that little arrow that shows up, clicking and holding with my left mouse button and dragging. Okay. Now I'm going to reduce this about this large here so we can kind of see about how it lines up. Okay, And we're going to make it a little bit of a lighter color so we can see that it's in front. Okay, Click on this, ob click on this object again, hold the Alt key, drag it over, and then we copied it. And so there's a very simple ion channel. If you want it to look a little more organic, I'm going to copy it and paste it over here. So if you want to have it a little more of a curvy appearance, switch over to the direct selection tool and you'll see these little dots on each of the corner. Now this is a new feature of Adobe Illustrator. Um, so it, what it'll do is it'll add uh, a little bit of a curvature to that object. Okay, That makes it a little, a little bit more organic. Now if you wanted to have a little more of a 3D appearance, then we're going to apply some gradient or some shading to it. So I'm going, to, I'm going to click on this back object, go over here to gradient, and click on the freeform gradient. Okay, now it's going to apply, it tries to predict the colors that you want. Of course, we don't want any of these colors. We don't want any brown. So we're going to remove this. So and to, to remove that color, you just click on the object and slide it away. Okay, so we're going to move this one. But for right now, let's just switch to points. So you can edit things in points or edit things in lines. Right now, we're going to just move these points around to get them about the way we want. We want this color to be the lighter green. So we're, I double clicked on it, click down to the swatches, move it to the lighter green. Okay, now we're going to move to the lines. So I'm going to click on this object and click up and then click again here so it doesn't warp it too much and then click like this and then click escape on the keyboard to uh, leave that line segment now I want to I'm going to delete this line so I'm going to click on it and then drag it away now I'm going to click escape again because it, it tried to pin it to the this other line that was drawn I want it to be drawn on this line I'm going to click down on here, click again, and click here and here. Okay, so that adds a little bit of a 3D appearance to the channel. If you want a real 3D appearance of the channel, I recommend using the 3D effect feature. So I'm going to just copy over this one side of the channel, hold Alt, clicking and dragging and moving it over. Let's move it about right there. Zoom in. Now I'm zooming in by holding the Alt key and spinning my mouse wheel. Now I'm going to go up. So now that I have this object selected, I want to lighten the colors a little bit because when you apply a 3D effect, it will darken them for some reason. So I'm going to click the outline, move that to the, a shade lighter, 
and then click on the fill, move that to, a sh I don't want, I actually want it like this. So, so it's a little bit lighter and that's, a, if that's a little bit lighter than your taste, don't worry whenever you, you can always change it afterwards. So click effect. So now that you have the object selected, go over here to effect, go down to 3D, click revolve. What it's going to do is it's going to take that object and it's going to revolve it around an axis. In this case, the left axis. Now, you probably will see something that shows up like this. Now, uh, let's, we wanted a hundred, we wanted to slice it in half, just like we see on the left. So we want this to be revolve 180 degrees around. You don't have to pick 180 degrees, that just works um, well in this situation, but you might want half of the channel to be, you know, you can do uh, 270 if you want to kind of, you know, cut it in a, and a quarter, okay? But we're gonna do 180. So we want it sliced in half. Okay, now I recommend kind of moving in about the way you want, and then make the fine adjustments by typing in to these units here. So I'm gonna click zero, zero. I want it to be tilted down a little bit, maybe minus 10. You always, whenever you do these 3D effects, especially on channels, you want it tilted down this way. Now, if you don't know where to tilt, now notice I can I can manipulate the orientation of this object by clicking on this cube here. Now, sometimes it's difficult to keep in mind or to remember which of these changes the orientation. So you can always change the angle this way. Okay. Or probably easier is just to change it on the image. Okay. We're going to do it minus 10. Okay. And this is a closed channel. We want it to be a little open. So we're going to add a little bit of an offset here. So maybe click four. So that opens that channel up a little bit. And of course you can modify that however you want. Click on more options. And this gives you all sorts of other ways of modifying this. The light's kind of coming in from the top right, but you can make it come in from the top left. You can make it come in from the center or from the bottom. So just uh, modify that however you want. You can change all sorts of properties here and play around with it. Sometimes there's some glitches that show up. Uh, you Sometimes tweaking just a few of these parameters just by one value, one or two values will fix those tweaks, uh, those, uh, those uh, glitches. So click OK. And there's uh, the open channel. You can also make a closed channel uh, by changing that offset to zero. Now you're not restricted to this shape, uh, this shape here. Uh, you can modify the shape. And before I get into that, I want you to kind of see what's happening here. So click on the appearance value, uh, the appearance windows and off, I didn't mention this in the beginning of the video, but if you want any of these items here, go up to window and click on either the gradient, but like four or uh, the appearance, uh, which is shown here and, that, and slide it over. Now, um, this, this 3D effect is an appearance value that's applied on the 2D object. So I can click on this, uh, this little eye and cause it to disappear. So now I'm only looking at all the other features of this object except for the 3D revolve. I can make it appear, shown here. I can modify the 3D revolve by clicking on it and I get this dialogue and I can modify any of those properties if I don't, if I didn't like how I originally set them. Now, I'm not limited to this a shape here. I can click on the direct selection tool and I can modify this shape any way that I want. You know, I can um, click on this one little anchor point and move it out here. I can change, make it a little curved, more curved. And then, sorry, maybe click on, let's move this back up again. Okay, so I'm gonna click on that anchor point, maybe drag it out this way. Now it's a, it kind of disappears whenever it has to calculate a lot. That's okay. And you can bring it in if you want. 
you know, give it a little more organic of appearance. Now you can also add, let's say you want to add a, you know, ion selection center and in, in the, in the center of this channel. So you can just click. So I clicked up on the pen tool. So I clicked and hold and then move down to the add anchor point. I'm just clicking these regions here. Now I'm going to switch over to the direct selection tool. I'm going to hold the shift and I'm going to click these points and make them curved lines. Now I'm going to move this point out and I'm going to slide out just like that. Okay. And you can just tweak, it might be helpful if you zoom in, you can tweak the, make this, make this more of a curved appearance here. Just by moving these handles, you can adjust the prop, adjust the properties of that ion selection pore. So that is how you draw a ion channel in Adobe Illustrator.